Welcome back to Career Chats with Laura. Today I will tell you about what I do for work, credit risk model development. I have a background in mathematics, especially statistics, and I currently lead a team to develop credit risk models at a bank. I'm part of the larger credit models and methodology department. If you don't know what credit risk modeling is, then don't worry. Neither did I before I got my first job in credit risk modeling. I've been working in the field for five years now, so I will talk about credit risk modeling and how I got into this field. Now, this isn't meant to be a tutorial on credit risk modeling, so I won't be going into stuff like PD, LGD, EAD. If you're interested in learning more technical details, please leave a comment below and I can go into details in another video. Before I talk about credit risk modeling, first I'll talk about credit risk. Credit risk, in simple terms, is the risk that the bank loses money from clients that borrow money and do not pay it back. If you're running a business, then you would care about the potential ways that you could lose money. So for banks, lending is a big part of their business, so they care about credit risk. Furthermore, regulators also keep a close eye on financial institutions to make sure that they're managing their credit risk properly. So a lot of the work that we do need to adhere to the regulations. So how would a bank manage credit risk? Well first, the bank needs a way to measure it. One natural way to measure credit risk is to look at credit loss, the amount of money that the bank could lose from lending. That's where credit risk modeling comes in. From a high level, we build quantitative models that take in information about the credit worthiness of a client and the terms of a deal, and outputs the amount of money that the bank might lose from the deal. Our work is similar to data science, but we focus on the domain of credit risk. When we do credit risk modeling, we are interested in factors that drive credit loss and how strongly they are associated Associated with credit loss. These factors could include information about the client, the client's behaviors, the economic environment, and so on. We typically try to model the probability of default, as well as how much money we could lose, in other words, loss given default, and the amount of money that is at risk when the client does go into default, in other words, exposure at default. Our models are largely data driven, generally built using statistical techniques, and sometimes using machine learning. Sometimes there is also a judgment component to the models. For example, we use business knowledge to select relevant variables for the model instead of fully relying on technical variable selection techniques. Also, when we do feature engineering, we need to make sure that the features make business sense and not just apply squares or logs or random combinations just to see what works. Since these models are data-driven, we work a lot with data. This involves extracting data, reviewing the data and investigating any discrepancies, cleaning the data and applying various transformations to the data. In fact, most of the time we spend is arguably in the data processes. The actual model fitting and analytics part is a smaller portion of the work. The models we develop undergo a lot of scrutiny. After we develop the models, it must undergo validation before it can be implemented. The validation team would review our work and perform additional testing to make sure that our model works and that what we have done is accurate and reasonable from a conceptual perspective. Then there are internal and external auditors that also review our work and our processes. Then there are regulators that also review our work from time to time. So it's really important that we make sure what we do is transparent, well-documented, and has a reasonable amount of rigor. We work with databases and data lakes to extract our data our modeling processes are written using programming software in languages like R, SAS, and Python. We use GitHub for code version control, Expel spreadsheets to do some simple analytics, Microsoft Word and Confluence for our documentation, and sometimes other visualization software. The large Canadian banks typically use SAS as their main tool for model development and statistical analysis. But now Python and R are also becoming more widely adopted. The work my team does is typically project-based, and the model development projects could range from three months to one year, depending on the complexity and materiality of the portfolio, the data, and the model. If we count the implementation of the model, that could take even longer. Our day-to-day -day will vary depending on which stage of the model development cycle that we're on. The credit risk model development cycle is very similar to the data science life cycle. So I'm going to pull out crisp DM here as a reference. A model development cycle typically begins when a model needs to be built for a new portfolio or a new regulatory requirement. We first begin by understanding the business requirements and the regulatory requirements. We take a look at the available data and try to make sense of it. 
We assess if the data is suitable for modeling based on the requirements, and we check the data quality. If the checks pass and the data is suitable, we then start to clean the data and apply transformations so that the data can fit the modeling algorithms. Once the data is prepared, we begin modeling, which includes feature selection, model fitting, and model evaluation. Once we finalize the model configuration, we write documentation on our model in a model white paper and prepare our model package, which includes the white paper, the code, and the data for submission to model validation. Depending on the complexity of our model, validation could take a few months, and we would be engaged with the model validation team to answer any questions and to address any issues. Once the model passes validation and is approved by the business owner, which is our primary user, the model will be implemented into production. Once the model is implemented, we monitor the model's performance to ensure that the model still works as time passes and collect the user's feedback. After a couple of years, we would revisit the model to maintain it and update it. If you want to get into the credit risk modeling field, then you will need to have the following background and skills. First, a quantitative background. If you studied math, engineering, computer science, econometrics, any quantitative field in the university, that will give you decent background to pick up credit risk modeling. Two, the ability to communicate clearly with audiences at varying technical levels. You will need to be able to communicate with business, with other model developers, and model validation, which have different degrees of technical understanding of modeling. Number three, coding skills. A good portion of the job involves coding, so you better be able to code. Four, data manipulation skills. You will need to be able to get the data into a format that you can use in order to analyze it and build models. Five, analytical skills you will need to be able to make sense of the numbers in order to judge if your model is appropriate. Six, technical writing skills. You will need to document your work, explain your analysis, and comment your code so that other people can understand and validate your work. Seven, attention to detail. Accuracy is important to our work and our work is highly scrutinized. Eight, time management. Our work is project-based and your day-to-day -day could vary you will need to be able to plan out your work and manage your time effectively to deliver your work in a timely manner. The compensation will vary based on your location, the level of your role, your experience, and your performance. Typically, the US banks will pay higher than the Canadian ones. The numbers I have are based on surveying the big five Canadian banks. At the entry level, the base will start at around 75K to 95K, and with bonus, that will be around 80K to 100K. Then, at the senior level, you're expected to be paid around 95k to 125k base. After bonus, that will take you to about 100k to 150k. Once you get to the people management level, you start at around 125k to 150k base. Then, after bonus, that will take you to 175k to 225k. So, there you go. That's a lowdown of what I do for work. If you found this video helpful, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe. If you're interested in learning more about credit risk modeling, leave a comment below and I can talk more about it in future videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.